Welcome to a special edition of Alien Theorist Theorizing as we bring you an investigative episode in the case of Liar Liar, Who Cut the Wire? Uh, as we bring the trial of Zell to find out what the fuck happened and why he missed ATT Live and how he got <sighs> repairs so fast within 24 hours. Uh, did it raise suspicion? On a Sunday. Yes. On, oh, a on a Sunday. Sunday. So we we are having the trial of Zell. Cue the fucking line. What the fuck you're talking about? This, this is theorite's court. <laughs> yeah, theorite court. That's theorite's court. All right. So Zell, as everyone knows, missed the last ATT live. So it fucked up the. We couldn't bring in the the Cosmic Channels because Zell has the keys. What happened? What happened, Zell? A lot of the details of the case are still under investigation, so I can't release the details. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, but someone in my household may or may not have just ripped the fiber wire out of the wall because they didn't know what it was. So explain this to me. Someone okay. in your house is just willy nilly ripping wires. They don't. Pulling, are, no, are, are they an expert on? We're renovating the house, yeah. right? So yes. stuff's getting moved, it's getting painted. Yeah. Okay. And instead of asking the one person in the household who knows exactly what all that stuff does, right? Rather right, skip that step and then just remove it. Aggressively, <laughs> is there is there other wires in the vicinity that have been r- removed aggressively, leading to someone to think that it's okay to just pull wires in the house? No, it's just a fiber <laughs> wire is just for some reason incredibly brittle. <laughs> if you pull it, it just rips in half, and that's what happened. And then, like, <laughs> what like, were we talking about like pulling for a little bit of slack, or like was the intention no, to remove? No, like trying to like disconnect it without, you have to like, as a like an optic cable, you have to like grab it and kind of like f- dangle it out of the hole. You can't just like grab it like a power cord and go boop. So she just uh, ripped it in half. Okay, or they, okay. they ripped it in half. I can't say who All it right. is. The more, the more interesting aspect of this, of this case is how you got six star service from a one star telecom provider on a sunday <laughs> on a sunday on a sunday when, when you're like we're good in the morning boys i was like what i was like good. i thought this was going to be a 30 day fucking turnaround by, what? by 8 30 you're back up and running i thought for sure i was going to internet's down all week but i just you know i called and i just Kept going up the chain because they said, oh, the closest closest appointment's Friday. And then someone else is like, well, we can get you Wednesday. I was like, no, no, no. I need it like right now. It's a home business. Need the internet. And eventually they said, all right, first thing, first shift tomorrow. Huh. Even when it wasn't their failure. I wanted to, I was like, I want to speak to the manager's manager. No, it, no, <laughs> no. Here's the part of the story where it gets a little different. Because right. I called the first time, said what happened, told the truth, was denied. Yeah, that's what makes sense. Then I had to call back and say, this is their <laughs> fault. This is their technical error. The cable does not work. Yeah. And then after back and forth in a while, they said, okay, yeah, it's, we get it. This is a home business because I have a registered business in the house. So I had to like prove it. <laughs> and then the guy came out, found out, and he got there that it was not what I said it was. And I said, listen, man, it's the only way I could get it fixed. He's like, I get it. And he, this, he, fixed uh... it five, he fixed it in five minutes. This has got uh, Plunger Gate written all over it to me. I don't know. It's going to have to go to the people. It's going to have to go to the people. You got security cameras set up? Yeah. Nope. Do you have a uh, work an order alibi? bill or anything like that? Yeah, you got a work order bill? You got an you got alibi? Work order bill? I got the guy's contact. and uh, Let's get him on the line. Well, funny story. We got him on the line right yeah. now. Yeah. His name um, is Adam. All right. Well, I guess we'll, like, we'll guess we'll, we'll accept that. I, we were blown oh, away when you people. said, "I'll be up, up and going tomorrow." I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" There's no way he's going to be up and ready so to mo- go. Moral tomorrow. of the story: Just lie and say it's their fault well, all the that, way until right. the guy gets there and go. Listen, it was my fault. Sorry. All right. Oh, well, so I'm you're right. setting a precedent of lying, is what you're saying? Yes, hundred percent. Right. Okay. So you if you want service back. fast, if you want ser- service fast from a terrible service okay, provider. So if you want service fast, but what happens if you want the night off? When you forgot about a scheduled uh, programmed event. Yeah, you live. Oh, you just ghost. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs>
I love it. Well, the convenient part was you like, I have no internet and no data, boy. Sorry. No messages from that point on. I was like, what the fuck? How does that one? His last it's message it was like the, te- the like text numbers he had left was going down. He's like, ah, oh, this is it. Farewell. Yeah, no, I have data. <laughs> when you when you max your data, if you have an unlimited plan, you get, you get like the, the slow. You get the trickle data, so you can sometimes your check a message. Text messages just okay. said like the. Anyway, just fix forty five right. minutes. I'll accept it. You're looking better than ever. Um, yeah, obviously, you look this refreshed, is rested. Case, you look yeah, well. not, <laughs> not even a little bit. <laughs> uh, this is case file two eighty four, Operation Main Brace. I'm Brayden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. That was an extended um, intro. I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked about it we're like, last night. We're like, oh, we'll grill him. We'll grill him at the start of the show. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah we're talking about Operation Main Brace, which uh, is actually like a, a bit of a more recent development as like documents on this this actual case file or, or declassified relatively uh recently um operation main brace is a uh, military exercise which took place in late september 1952 um which is this is like months after um you know just a couple months after you had your uh your washington dc ufo flap which was fun because i went back and um through some of the like news articles of that washington dc ufo flap and i saw an actual couple articles that were referenced my my town like where i grew up oh, i thought you were um, gonna say my work i was like what no. <laughs> <laughs> so, i don't know if my work existed back then um definitely not uh so the um but it was yeah it was just kind of neat to be like oh like officers from this county da 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 and i'm like oh neat that's that's where i lived because um, it's 52 right isn't that the same year as project blue book like this was a big year for ufos i bought blue book been around for a while blue books, but yeah, yeah blue book's going yeah I think blue it, book, uh, full swing but Operation, like, the events that happened at Operation Mainstay are, like... Brace. Main brace. Main brace. Mainstay. Main brace. Main brace. Mainstay. What did I say? Mainstay. Listen, Stay. I, I've slept, like, 45 minutes <laughs> every night, okay? But we get it. And, yeah, the start date of Project Blue Book was 1952. Yeah. Boom. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah, big so, year for UFOs. And this, the events at Mainframe... Is that the one? Main brace. No, Main God. brace. Jesus. <laughs> Fuck, it's, it's uh, mainstream. Ego all over again. Basically, of like, like kick started, like, or reignited the UK's basically interest in UFOs and like being like, okay, well, maybe we should take this seriously. Uh, so yeah, during during this uh, this set of exercises, which were NATO exercises, um, uh, which the were performed Allied Command Atlantic, the ACLANT, mm-hmm. um, which they were performing in an area of the North Atlantic, uh, there was a number of actual UFO sightings that occurred during the same time. So uh, just to give a little perspective on what the size of operation main brace like this wasn't just a tiny kind of like one-off kind of thing like this is one of the this was the largest peacetime military exercise since world war ii um being staged in 1952 uh you have the cold war starting to ramp up and you know the soviet union yeah. is already pretty much like this is the a public enemy flex. number one at this point yeah this is and a huge flex on russia being like listen mm-hmm. look at our military capabilities <laughs> Uh, yeah, because uh, Operation Main Brace was meant to simulate a Soviet invasion of Western Europe uh, by sea. So they were getting all their, you know, they were showing their Navy power, uh, getting out there and, and yeah. getting everybody at sea and being that, like, okay. Like the scale of this is like eight eighty thousand military personnel, 200 ships and a thousand aircraft. Mm hmm. Full like, army, yeah, yeah, boys. Like, fuck God, buddy, this is fucking. Games. This is GI Joe. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I mean, you think I'm way <laughs> to the danger zone. zone. I think. I mean, you basically like an aircraft carrier. At least today, like the larger aircraft carriers are like five thousand thing, like five thousand people. So it's like that's a couple aircraft carriers, like aircraft carrier fleets, uh, multiple. You know. Uh, yeah across each country, you know, international, uh, assembly of them. Um, and this was all occurring like in the, in the North Atlantic. So in the vicinity of Denmark and Norway, like up and up in that area. So on September 13th, um, one of the Danish destroyers called the Willemos, uh, was participating in, in the maneuvers, um, and was just North of Bornholm Island. So during the night you had Lieutenant Commander Schmidt Jensen and several members of his crew, uh, said that reported that they had actually seen an unidentified 
object. Um, and when they described this object, they said it was like a, a triangular in shape and that it was moving at, at high speeds, uh, you know, toward the southeast uh now all of that sounds like okay it's a triangular in shape like uh you know you could kind of be like well maybe it was a plane night flyer plane uh but interestingly you know one of the characteristics that kind of like puts it over in there is like they said this object emitted like a bluish glow well um, and the end had been a triangle like because we're just not we're not far from roswell like it's all saucers like the triangle right. shape is like this has got to be one of the earlier triangle shape ufos we hear about and the other thing concerning would be that you're doing military exercises and you're like, who's that? <laughs> there should be no one up here. Yeah, you're like, anyone? Is anyone <laughs> flying up here? And it's radio silence. You're like, is this part of the war games? No. Yeah. Uh, uh, Commander Jensen, like when, when he, you know, observing the object, he's probably estimated that he estimated that it's speed at over 900 miles per hour, which is like, that's, that's like fast. 300 miles per hour faster than most of the aircraft that they have yeah, at this like point. Yeah, the Sabre is like, goes only 700 miles per hour is what I yeah, like. Yeah, like that's substantial. Most aircraft faster. haven't even cracked the sound barrier yet. Like it's, yeah, yeah you are, aren't operating like above the sound barrier for very long uh, at this point. So it's something moving that fast is, is of note. So, uh, you know, calling out there, that, I mean, this is just one. Now there, there are more uh, yeah. during this time. Um <laughs> like one of the like i just want to interject with this this one point is like as this was kicking off because again 1952 big year for ufos uh you had edward rupelt the you know fucking famous with the project blue book he was like telling people he's like hey while you're out there keep an eye out for uh ufos yeah and then sure as shit like this operation like just countless encounters with unidentified <laughs> flying objects yeah right? it was and, almost uh, yeah it was almost like a bit of a joke like he said it almost like they were yeah, saying like kind of jokingly and, and it was like, just like yeah. oh and then, and then he's then like, like oh, oh wait oh, everyone did yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck <laughs> um so yeah like within the next week of uh during these exercises there was like at least four major sightings uh by well-qualified observers uh, of ufos um so after after this one the the next one next sighting of note uh took place on september 19th um and this is probably one of the one of the uh, most popular ones or like the, the kind of most significant of the sightings is you had a uh, flight lieutenant michael sweeney uh who is a staff instructor who had been based <laughs> at at, at the Royal Air Force's Central Flying School of Little Rissington, Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire? Yeah. Gloucestershire. Okay. Gloucestershire? Gloucestershire? Gloucestershire. 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 It's like Worcestershire. Shire. <laughs> um, so uh, <laughs> Sweeney had been basically like uh, instructing uh, another – another Royal Navy Lieutenant, uh, David Crofts. <laughs> and they had, uh, they had pretty much been taking, like doing an exercise, which was essentially like kind of a, um, like a cross country flight. Um, and he had, uh, <laughs> Royal Navy Lieutenant David Crofts, like sitting in the back. And then it was, uh, you had Sweeney well, up in the front. It, it, I want to just add that it never says he was sitting in the back. What it says is it, he was seated behind his student because i had a look to see if that's how it was written everyone it was and then it just gave me this mean? picture like, of like talking like ghost style <laughs> yeah that's what <laughs> i mean and he's yeah. like he's like he's like you just gotta feel it you yeah. just gotta feel it hips. right like <laughs> the guy's like oh <laughs> he's holding the choice he's like that's it just you're getting whispering it, down. it whispering yeah. in his fucking yeah, there you ear, go big boy <laughs> <laughs> that's what um, i picture in my head and i hope that's what everyone pictures when they the look into this yeah pull it up there you go pull it hard yeah, just pull it moved around yeah um so they were they were flying in a uh british meteor fighter jet uh, and they were re returning to the top cliff airfield um from the exercises that took place over the north sea at the time now uh sweeney describes that as the meteor jet uh, came through a layer of clouds around 15,000 feet, um, he suddenly, well, his quote is, got the fright of my life because there appeared to be smack in front of the airplane, three white or nearly white circular objects. Two of them yeah. were on level keel and one of them was canted at a slight angle to one side. I thought, God almighty, this is three chaps coming down on parachutes. 
No, it, what it was was a crescent moon, Jupiter and Venus in the sky. Yeah, yeah of course. Slightly mm-hmm. angled moon. Uh, we all know that. Every experienced Air Force pilot cannot tell the difference between the stars and the moon and UFOs. Right. All lined well. up. Well, these were, and, like, didn't he describe them as swaying back and forth like a pendulum? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's so, why yeah, he they thought it was yeah. someone coming down. Like, in a right, bench. exactly. Yeah. It was so, like, like, yeah. A, like a leaf falling or something, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. So he thought, yeah, he thought these were parachutes like coming down because of the way that they were kind of like, yeah, kind of like arcing back and forth. Like, Wait, what, a, how how high up was he? This was uh, he was saying at fifteen thousand feet. So it's cool. I guess that's skydiving. That's where you skydive from, isn't it? Ten or fifteen yeah. thousand feet or something. Be right <laughs> I mean, at the right at the top, but they wouldn't pull their parachute yet. If you had parachute that high up, it would take you forever to get to the ground. <laughs> you just, <laughs> You'd just be floating the, for three hours up there. Boo, boo, do, boo, do, boo. Um. So when he when he went on to you know describe a little bit what he thinks he said they were about like they were saucer shaped like or, or plate oh, okay. shaped is what he was saying um, they had this like slightly off white color uh, in ter- and then that they seemed to like emit some type of fuzzy or iridescent light around their edges so force giving them field. like kind of like a yeah force so field. some type of, perhaps yeah. sounds like a kind of force field or field yeah. projection or something like that or means of propulsion. Uh, but uh, th- there were no visible signs of propulsion. Like there wasn't, there wasn't uh, an exhaust. There wasn't anything like that. So like you, it's not a conventional aircraft uh, in, in any way that looks like he, he said that he didn't see what appeared to be any portholes or turrets or any, any of the other signs that normally would have identified an object as like a conventional aircraft, um, even viewed at like an unusual, even at a weird angle, like you came in behind this thing and you're like, I, I this doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before. <laughs> That's what everyone says when they come behind me. Like, oh, what the, the hell? I've never seen what anything is this like thing? this. What never is seen anything like it. In the fucking way, I can't yeah, see anything. Yeah. What is this? Is this a person? Yeah. It's an eclipse. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's an eclipse. <laughs> 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 it's nighttime. <laughs> ah! <laughs> um, so, uh, when they got to, uh, I guess they took it, they took the meteor into a climb and they kind of decided that there wasn't really anything they could do about these things. They weren't, that, that there wasn't, uh, they well, didn't know I what mean, they were. What are you going to do? You're not just going to shoot them. <laughs> so like you're pretty, you're pretty strapped up in the air. Like you f- do a flyby, I guess, if you buddy, could. Buddy from fucking last week in the dog fight would have went, he would have engaged. Oh, Gordon. 100%. Oh, yeah. He would have Gordo buzzed would have engaged. Times. Yeah, Gordo would have been fucking all over it. <laughs> um, well, these are these are British pilots. They're just a little bit more polite, I suppose. Yeah, a little more, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Can you move, please? <laughs> Identify uh, yourself. So, um, according according to uh, Sweeney, he's uh, he's quoted as saying, "I was too shaken by what I had seen and decided to call the exercise off and go back to base." I called up air traffic control at Rissington and said I had three unidentified objects fairly close and gave them my course. I understand later that there was a certain amount of pandemonium on the ground because they weren't used to having their own staff instructors calling up saying, "We have got three unidentified objects in front." <laughs> What do we do? Uh, they didn't know what to do either. They're like, you're the one supposed to tell us. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I can imagine like the, you know, they're calling it air traffic control and they're like, we don't, we don't have anything up there. Like what is going on? And it's just like exploding into like <laughs> chaos. What and I down can there. imagine. What is exactly. it? What is it? What is he seeing? God! And, like, well, you know, I wonder like, if part of them too was like, is this part of this exercise? Like, are, is this a test? Like, I wonder if that was running through their heads. I'm sure it was. Like, is this, could this be someone else? And it's like, it probably takes a while to get to like every like, states is that you know, you can't know. Like, who the fuck is it? No one? Like, what the hell is these things? Like, I bet it's a bit of a fucking pandemonium when this takes up, like, when this happens here. Um, so when the plane had actually descended down to 5,000 feet and started getting towards, uh, towards the, the airfield, um, there was actually crew on the ground that said that they spotted, uh, some type of spot, like silvery circular object traveling several thousand feet above or what they estimated several thousand feet above the meteor, but on its same trajectory. So still no, like, like kind of above it, just them. same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, just like we saw in the Gorman dogfight is they like, whatever these were, were at first, you know, in that one, they were evading and then it's like, they paced them after. Right. And we're seeing that now, which is crazy because this is like one of the largest like military exercises of the time. And there's something up there that's just like, yeah, I'm just going to fucking pace this, uh, 
Pacis Ally Jet. What was it? Akbar? What, what was it? What was the acronym? Drop. <laughs> no. What was the acronym for this thing? Oh, Ackland. 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 It's like just going to paste the Ackland uh, plane here. <laughs> um, so this is one of the one of the few like actual um, like official UFO reports that's that's actually preserved in the National Archives uh, in Washington D.C. Where you have. Um, you have Royal Air Force Flight Lieutenant John Kilburn of 269 Squadron, who kind of reported from observing on the ground, said that this object began to descend toward the meteor. But it's like descent motion is what what we get the, the description of it swinging in a pendular motion. Like and he said similar to a sycamore leaf. So his actual report of seeing this thing. So it's like it's like flying like like that kind of like up and yeah. down. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, going, which is I mean. I don't know a lot about aerospace engineering no? and planes. <laughs> Wait, what? You've I watched a lot like of I videos, say that though. Every week. You're an expert, I thought. <laughs> You're an expert. You watch a lot of videos. <laughs> That's what I'm saying on planes. I'm an expert on looking at photos of UFOs and expert telling you UFO. if, it's a bug right, if it's a bug or not. <laughs> uh, and so I'm like, I don't think that's a, an ideal f- flight path for a, any kind of flight vehicle in flight. Seems like it would like be hard on it. Difficult to do, tear it apart in the sky. I don't know. Um, I'm just a yeah, mere man, <laughs> just a regular guy. Um, from that motion, uh, Kilburn was saying that at his first instinct was that this was this was a parachute, like that was a parachute. And then, if it, aside from that, he thought also perhaps it could be like an engine cowling that maybe had broken loose from a jet. So it was just kind of like falling down you know just a like a piece of uh you know a piece of like sh- you know a sheet of metal kind of just catching like catching the light off. or something yeah, yeah, yeah just catching off and and falling down slowly but all of that kind of went out the window when this object apparently stopped suddenly in midair and then rotated on its own axis and then zipped off at uh like an unmatched 900 speed. miles <laughs> yeah, an hour over the horizon right. and you're like that's the fastest parachuter i've ever seen and uh this entire like this whole sighting took place over about 10 minutes um the entire thing from from start to end uh when when sweeney saw them and then down to when the the object disappeared uh apparently under its own uh, its own propulsion and took off it's like this whole thing was about 10 minutes i mean it's no gorman dog fight at 27 minutes but 10 minutes is a really long time when when shit's getting really weird no doubt (laughs) yeah uh like that's not a, you got time to let people know and people are looking and other people see it. So, um, so is that some of the stuff that was coming coming up in the, uh, you know, happening up in the air? Um, you had Sweeney kind of calling down the, the, uh, the control tower, but like what other things that were happening in the control tower, um, over at Rissington, um, Let's see. They actually called HQ Fighter Command at Stanmore, uh, which is near London. And this was, again, like this is the height or the beginning stages of the Cold War. And so with the fear of Soviet attack kind of already hanging over everybody's head, you had senior officers who were already like, let's go. Defense alert. Let's let's get it. Like, uh, what, what's kill we it. have to be ready. Kill it with fire. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. Kill it. What a better rebuttal than if. Sir, it looks like force. a balloon. Shoot it down. <laughs> Shoot it down. It's a goddamn Bring Corbin balloon. The Corbin <laughs> balloon's back. <laughs> yeah, a rusky balloon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, the thing for me is I'm like, if this is a show of force, and like right when I started reading about this, why this military operation was happening, like part of me kind of linked the theory right away of like, you know, we talk about Operation Paperclip, right? And Operation Os Viking, where the Russians we're taking scientists and it's theorized that they might have some sort of advanced, like had advanced aerospace engineers working on some sort of revolutionary plane or flight capabilities. Propulsion and it's like, systems, what, yeah. yeah. So it, it's, it's one of those things for me where I go, okay, they're doing a show of force in the Atlantic. What better little rebuttal than if you're going to fly your experiment to craft that, you know, is just going to leave every single one of these things in the dust, right? And you're just like, go, and they're like, just to fuck with this. So, like, I thought about that, too. That's kind of where my brain went. But at the same time, it's like, why would you want to expose your fucking, the ace up your sleeve, right? So I I was thinking, potentially, maybe that's what this entire operation was about. Maybe some, like, one of the, maybe the bigger, you know, the bigger powers in NATO, knew about it or maybe one of the countries say the u.s who are involved in operation paperclip 
this was just maybe their plan the whole time. And what better time would it be to test this stuff? Right. Would be now like, let's test it and see oh. if they can pick it up, right? Let's see if, like if you our know, own people can. Exactly, right? Like, let's test and see, see if our guys can fucking pick this shit up. It's interesting. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I never thought about that. A little, yeah. a little, uh, little CIA classic CIA fake out. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so at the same time that you had Sweeney, uh, you know, in his meteor uh, making their visual report, uh, you also had uh, a ground controlled interception radar in southern England. Uh, which was from our, uh, Sopley. Uh, we're tracking actually an unidentified, unidentified aircraft, uh, which was moving across the southwest of England. So there's another, like a whole thing kind of going on here. So the, the controller actually alerted the commander of Royal, a- Royal Air Force, uh, Southern Sector at Redlow Manor. And we, we haven't really talked. I, we might have mentioned Redlow Manor at some point, but Redlow Manor is also rumored to be one of the places that, um, at least in the, in the UK, that it is kind of like the UFO. That's like their Area Fifty One ish kind of thing. Um, at least I've, I've seen it. It's their Roswell, for, not their Roswell, <laughs> not their Roswell. But like it's like the secret Rudlow Manor is like this big, huge. It's 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 a large underground facility. It's like this huge mansion on top, and then it's so like a bunch saying, of like tunnels. It's down Roswell, there. but they drink tea, or maybe it's like their Dulce. <laughs> maybe it's like their Dulce <laughs> base kind of like thing. I think it's I think it's also been. I love it. It sounds like a fucking Netflix show that I could that middle-aged women would love yeah women. absolutely <laughs> <laughs> except for the Ward, aliens <laughs> wardlow manor yeah like, you manor. like you trick redlow yeah like yeah. have you seen oh come on this babe week, let's, on let's watch manor. yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of romance and then yeah, a little, little x file meets uh what's that other show the downton abbey downton abbey, downton abbey. yeah a little, right, little that little this right yeah yeah <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, you know, calling into them and, um, like, I guess, I guess Rudlow Manor at the time. And then I guess between Chippenham and Bath and Wiltshire, uh, this was kind of like the, uh, like this is like Rudlow Manor is like an underground, like underground bunker that had pretty much like all of the fighter plotting control room. Like it was everything, everything that went through the air, they, Mark yeah. there. Okay. And when you think control room, like I, in my head, think computers, but this is like just, there's probably a lot of paper. Well, it's probably a bunch of like models and 50s. stuff. Like that. It's just yeah. a big map and they kind of just yeah. like put stuff on it. Of, like, a lot so. of fucking little paper model planes that they just like yeah. push into the, on yeah. their map. Great. Yeah. It's just like a, no, it's yeah. just like a game of risk pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Just pushing yeah. pieces around. Like a, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're That's go exactly what it is. A bigger Hasbro. When was Hasbro founded? They probably gave the like, hey, can we get a big, Big board of risk. Big version. Yeah, sure, I guess. A couple extra pieces. It's like risk, but bigger. Yeah. <laughs> um, so all of these unidentified blips were were uh, were treated as hostile until they could actually identify what they were. Um, and the sector commander actually gave the order to go ahead and scramble interceptors just in case. You know, I mean, better safe than sorry, right? That they're going to get mm-hmm. uh, fighters up in the air and kind of figure out what this is. So they had a pair of meteors who were on uh, 24 hour quick reaction alert duty at RAF Tangmir, uh Sussex, and these ones took off and kind of. Uh, directed them you know they directed them towards this unidentified radar target um uh, you know and they were calling down a soapley and like according to the uh i guess the late air marshal sir peter horsley like officers in the filter room at redlow manor were able to identify uh sweeney's uh meteor on the plotting table like they had you know they had a model i guess (laughs) like they had a model of his plane like sitting there we need a meteor on the on the map immediately I, and like open I up a little drawer with like a bunch two of guys, the guys on 24 hour call like sitting by a fire with like tea and a cigar and they're like gentlemen and they come to the table and he throws down like two fucking pieces that don't look like anything else he goes these just entered the airspace they're like we need you to go up right now they're like hmm okay Yes, bip, bip, studio. Wah, yeah. wah. <laughs> indubitably. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they had um, when they were tra- they're tracking these blips on radar. They said that they suddenly actually disappeared off off the tube, like they off the uh, you know the display that they had, and then 
uh, like from from the distance that they went from the the tracking of the radar they estimated that these these things were traveling at up to a thousand miles per hour to go like to get off of the radar so fast like it just kind of like like gone um and then so the two meteors that they got up into the air actually followed the target or they you know they put them on their trail um but they failed to make contact with this thing see, which like is how like, fast do the meteors go the meteors only go up to i think 600 was like the yeah, top speed like good. 680 they, like they don't even crack the sound barrier like these things are um early early jets uh so it's like i think they went to like Mach 0.8 was like the fastest that they went uh and so yeah Mach like they weren't each made yeah, they weren't and i just want to add that for them to get off the radar that's the low end they would have been having to travel at least a thousand miles per hour to get off the radar in the time they did they don't know the speed that's not they were traveling at that speed that's they would have had to at least been traveling at that speed yeah mm-hmm. crazy uh so yeah um so these are all the reports that are going on and so again like we said that that sweeney is pretty much like they called off the exercise like they've done like he's like okay um you know the instruction the instructor time is over like we're landing like we're taking this thing down especially when he Uh, found out he was sitting right behind him he's like this is not there's another seat (laughs) um so i mean both both of the pilots were understandably stricken but you know it gets a little bit crazier when they actually uh, land, uh, you know, when they come down there. Um, but I think maybe we oh, want to take just, a, Dan, you read my mind <laughs> just before we get there. We're going to take a short break. We're going to grab a beer. I'll be right back. Yeah.
so when uh, when Sweeney and uh, and Croft c- came in and landed, like uh, stuff just started kicking off like right away. It's like they didn't even get time to leave like the tarmac. Like as soon as they were down there, like their wing commander basically like sprinted out uh, to their plane and then just like grabbed the pair of them and and told uh, told Sweeney basically go to your cabin. Don't the talk fuck to did you see. Go yeah. to your cabin. You're not going to talk to your cabin. Anyone. Exactly. Like keep your mouth shut. Go to the cabin. Do you know, if you, yeah, like all your meals are going to be brought to you. Uh, if you want anything to drink, you're going to have to get in touch with somebody to go get them oh, for yeah. it, which I assume is what like, you thought you saw, you did not see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not in the fun Will Smith rap way. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and Sweeney, is that like, shit. Sweeney is like visibly rattled by what is, what has happened here. So like, they're like one of the first things they tell them is like, you can't go to the bar, you know, cause dude probably wants to get a stiff drink just for like you know for the nerves he's gonna ju- first thing he's gonna <laughs> jump on the piano first off saying great balls of fire secondly he's gonna tell all everyone all the patrons the the his tale uh of what just transpired in the air so he's he's just gonna be a couple shots in he's gonna be like you know what we just saw uh, <laughs> hmm. yeah, but that way you could be like he's a fucking drunkard he's lying it's bullshit yeah they, they fucked up by doing this I, they should have let him go to the bar uh and then they sent they sent croft like they sent him home and they said they're like pretty much you don't stay there until you have to report the next morning like don't go anywhere uh go home and don't don't say anything about this and you know just there you go so um like just shortly after they pretty much tell him that you need to be here at nine o'clock uh, the next day where they were going to have uh, a couple of officers from the air ministry intelligence come in and debrief them separately, uh, you know, to be like, okay, so what did you see? Tell us yeah. exactly what you saw. Cause they want to make sure they're not fucking lying. Probably. Mm-hmm. It's crazy that they would wait till the next day to do that though. Like you'd want it fresh. Like I want this, now get it well, out of them asap okay well so if you're lying here maybe here's the thought process of that if you're lying in the sky and you say something say like me and dan are fucking <laughs> riding in the cockpit together uh and we're like hey we should we're, let's say this plan go style right right like, yeah, not yeah. in the back seat like yeah. he's cradling you i'm yeah. whispering his ear he's like you want to do something crazy <laughs> <laughs> and we yeah. concoct this story in the air boom we land it's fresh yeah. So if they wait and they sep- separate us, wait. I'm just still picturing you guys in that embrace. Yeah, like, can we get the like unchained melody? Like, oh <laughs> my the only, Julian. The only thing different <laughs> in, than the ghost is that like, not only are my hands around, but also my legs. Oh yeah. <laughs> just, well, and I think like the fucking the, the what do you call it? The, it's not a stick shift. What the fuck yeah. do you call it? Right instead of clay, it's the, the control fucking, stick. Right there, right? Control stick. Yeah, you know? my yeah, hands are over stick. his hands, and then my yeah. legs. He's wearing my oh. legs like a belt. Well, and because he's like, listen, it's it's only one seat, too, yeah. right? So you're like the you're crotching the joystick, like it's right there, and his yeah. hands are on the door. That's good. Yeah, That's and steamy. this is how. And <laughs> I'm, I'm like, boys. you want to? Right, you want brothers wanna, on chain yeah. melodies playing? Like, yeah, oh, you wanna, come on, you want to ascend? You've been, you've been on deployment for about there. nine months. Haven't seen them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, oh my love, my darling, my darling I hunger for, for your, your touch. touch. <laughs> As we're like going up to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's got a moose knuckle wrapped I'm around ascending. the fucking joint. <laughs> But so, like, if they concoct this together, I guess the idea is you see it, they Concocks. say they see it, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then they land, you separate them, you give them some time, because, like, you're going to fucking add shit. If you yeah, we got to split these I mean? fucking guys up. Jesus. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spray with this the fucking hose. This is a military. <laughs> and nothing to do with what they saw. <laughs> whatsoever. You guys can't fly together anymore. You go to the cabin. Not you. You go home. <laughs> oh, fucking broke back fucking aircraft or whatever the fuck. Uh, uh. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. Two men. No, absolutely. It's a beautiful story. In a we fucking, got into it. In a, it's good. In a war machine, no problem. 
Um, but like the next day, like you would think that if they made it up and they didn't have time to kind of like share their story with each other anymore, they might have more discrepancies like the next morning. Like maybe that was the idea is that if they were in the sky together, maybe some of them forgot one of them forgot. Hey, but you now feel like given the time, right. And you'd want, like, they want to know, especially you'd imagine anytime they saw something, they didn't know what it was. It was Russian. Mm-hmm. Bradley's Russian. Has to be, right? Like, I yeah, but maybe it's one of those things where they can then go check the radars, check all this other stuff, right? And we're going to get back. Yeah. And then we're going to yeah. get back to you guys and ask you what you saw to see if it lines up with the other information they have, right? Yeah. Cause this is back in the day when pilots see things are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not flying anymore. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, so one of, one of the interesting things about this is that when, when SUNY, uh, when the two of them, were kind of recalling this event and when they had the interview with these two with these two officials they were saying that they these guys didn't really seem all of that interested like they weren't like they were telling them what they saw but they weren't they're too busy staring at each other giving each other googly eyes <laughs> no i mean the the, the officials like weren't really interested like they they, they kind of seemed like they, oh, the officials were the officials they were, yeah the lights <laughs> briefly interrupted our flight <laughs> um the officials didn't seem all that kind of uh like they were just writing stuff down um i think i think sweeney kind of said that when he remarked on this like his memory of this it's that the officials didn't really they didn't ask like a lot of like really info like in deep information questions they really they asked them just kind of like some really like e- like very surface level questions about what did you see da, da, da. they didn't really um get very deep into the sighting it just seemed well, like they were it, there to kind of just check the boxes essentially well, and there's there's um, no fucking there's no there's no blueprint yet for like what they need to know what they need to ask right like this is all fucking new roswell just happened that not too long ago yeah i'm sure they told them like hey go interview these guys because they saw something They're like well what do you want us yeah. to ask him like I, I don't fucking know just get out there yeah. like <laughs> yeah, we haven't we haven't met anyone yet that's seen something this recent right so it's like there, there there's no playbook right like i'm sure they have stuff now that they go through but like at the time they're they're flying off the seat of their pants right they have well no and also like uh, like do. andrew andrew mark saying like yeah when you when you see something like really weird there's a chance of being grounded and i'm sure like they like dude it's like do we really want to ground an instructor like when the, like in the middle of this yeah. exercise like all of this stuff's going on do we really they're like well he's got nine sexual like, assault we have allegations. To- <laughs> 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 his flight name was weinstein yeah. um so you know it's it, it could be something like that where it's like well we need it we need to get a report but don't like d- don't dig too deep into it you know and it's just like just get get what you need and then you know get out of there uh with the, get to get that report so i i mean when as soon as the officers left the base um you know the the incident was pretty much considered officially closed. Um, yeah, neither Sweeney or Crofts actually recall being specifically warned not to discuss the sighting. Like nobody told them, Hey, you know, don't say anything or your family will disappear or, you know, any threats of any kind, or, you know, you'll lose your, if you like your pension, don't say anything. Um, you know, but apparently like a year later after the event, um, the airmen, the air ministry actually like issued like new instructions to all RAF stations, like warning air crew that reports of any type of aerial phenomena were considered classified, um, uh, and, like restricted. Like, so yeah. don't talk about them. Don't um, fucking say nothing. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was like, uh, I mean, that one was pretty, pretty serious where you had this one. And so, um, like again like this wasn't the only other sighting that we had like you had another one which is was like this one's a little bit adds a little bit more uh interesting point to this whole this whole event so on september september 20th you know just the the, the next day um you had an american newspaper reporter named wallace litwin who was aboard the uss uh franklin d roosevelt um which was an uh, aircraft also carrier. known as the swanky frankie the swanky frankie which we should only refer to. Yeah, they literally, its nickname was the Swanky Frankie. Yeah, and that's, that's good the name. only thing we should refer to. <laughs> um, that's a so, fucking dope name for a ship. Right? I can't believe there's not a band named Swanky Frankie. There's not. Um, you checked? 
I, we should <clears throat> actually, I shouldn't say that. A popular band named for Swanky Frankie. <laughs> um, so, Lit, so Litwin was on board the uh, the Swanky Frankie when he said that he was attracted up onto the onto the top deck because when there was like a bit of a commotion going on, and then you had he said that he saw like several pilots and flight crew members like pointing at something in the sky, and when he directed his attention to like where they were pointing, he said that he saw like some type of like silver sphere. Uh, in the sky that happened to be following the fleet, like just this, this sphere. Um, now, uh, from like, from this event, the operation main brace, like as a whole, like we actually have some of these photos, like some of the photos that Litwin actually took are like, they, they're all, they're available on the internet. You can find them. Like, it's just, just like these yeah, pictures of if, what's going if on. If you're watching one of the live stream, if you're watching the live stream right now, I'll pull it up right now. It's, this is one of them. I'm pretty sure this is the one. Can you guys see that? Uh, that yeah, now? it's coming up there. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, there you go. Mm. And we're looking at the this silver sphere right there. Oh, that's a good picture, though. Yeah, it's cool. Let's see if that, I think there's another one down here where, somewhere. Oh, do you have ad blocker? Do I know? Fungi. What am I? Is there toe, toe fungus? fungus. Fungi. No, no toe fungus. <laughs> it's somebody, it met, an absolute sweetheart on our Discord sent me a link. To use their ad blocker account, they're being like, here. They're like, like, this. They're like you must be <laughs> seeing your toe fungus ads. They're like, you must be so fucking embarrassed. Here, use this. Here, I'll, I'll pull up another one when I can find it. <laughs> um. So, uh, you know, he took four color. He said that he took four color photos of this round object, and then, you know, at the time, they just assumed it was a, a weather balloon. Uh, you know, as you do back then. Uh, well, I you know. mean, that's that's the that's basically you know one of the three if you chase it in the sky you were looking at a star it was a balloon or it's swamp gas right like that's the and uh so their photos made their way to the air force project chief captain ruppel um you know everybody's favorite guy uh and then you know he's quoted as saying that these pictures turned out to be excellent so judging by the size of the object um and each of the successive photos so like seeing them in sequence like how the the the, the size you know changed within you know the perception of the, the object um he could see that the thing was moving rapidly and that the possibility of this thing actually being a balloon um that launched from one of the ships like that was kind of crossed off the list that it's like it couldn't it couldn't be one of those because none of the units at that time out there uh that were participating had launched a balloon um and so like apparently like a poor print of one of the photographs actually appears in the project blue book files. Um, but it doesn't have any analysis report. Like it made it into the, the blue book, but it never got like kind of checked out. So it's like, it's one of those ones that kind of fell by the wayside, which we know there are tons of in blue book. Again, it's like fucking, you know, Heineck didn't really Heineck and his, his team. Like it, it was basically like two guys like taking taxis. They could, they could, yeah, they could only <laughs> investigate so many cases um, and getting all these things. And, you know, the thing is, is like, there might've actually been more sightings on during operation members that didn't make it into there. Like, I mean, it, any of these like during if you had a huge operation like this uh, you know which involved like over 80,000 members uh military members uh you know a thousand planes 200 ships like you probably had tons of reports coming in of just weird stuff going on um you know if, even if it was you know even the ships didn't launch a weather balloon or something like that um it, it's just like I, they, that you have two different ufos like two different in, in shape and size um, that you had. You had the what? disc-shaped ones, like, flying over that area, and then you had a, sever- a silver spherical one, which we talked about, you know, the, what was it, the Baghdad, the Baghdad Phantom, the Baghdad yeah, Phantom yeah. we talked about, the silver mm. sphere uh, traveling across there, things like, th- like, these kinds of UFOs are not, you know, all that, um, you know, unique in the fact that we have seen them before. Like the, the at least the silver spherical ones, like that's that's something that's kind of like well, the, what like what are those if they keep showing up um, across you know multiple sightings that we've seen, um, especially I guess I mean you wouldn't be, I guess those ones you wouldn't be able to see at night and most of them we see during the day, but uh, yeah, it's like that one's I, one of these ones is it's that you know you had this huge operation it's like were these extraterrestrial crafts that were just kind of interested in like what was going on were they well, um, that's my one of my my things is, is like how like if this isn't if this isn't russia 
you know, just kind of like fucking around with this operation or if it's not the States, just seeing what their kind of capabilities are, um, which I mean could backfire greatly if, if like the UK were to like pick up their crafts and they're like, hey, what are you guys doing? What is that thing? Right. And like it would backfire it. so, so fucking Prove bad. It. Um, like how, how confident are we that these would be extraterrestrials and not like Zell says, intraterrestrials where these things are, you know, we've rather than UFOs, they're USOs, right? They're coming from the sea. They're coming right? from the hollow earth. And that's USOs? why, and that's why they're, there's such an interest in that area is because, the Usos, yeah, the ones. Uh, and there's such an interest. These things are interested because, like, all of a sudden there's, like, an amassing fleet again on the mm. in the ocean. And they're, like, they're kind of popping up, seeing, like, what's going on. Dude, that's yeah. such a, I, I like that theory so much because kind of like how we have, like, the tribes in the Amazon that are pretty much still untouched. Yeah. There's us. Other than the <laughs> random. Modern Christian humans. And then there's the those. Bible. Yeah, that's what I mean. But like, yeah. har- hardly touched. And the, those people exist on this planet, and they know not. Like, we're completely separated. Everything is different. And then there's just another group of humans that retreated into the planet, and it came back up after like a thousand years. Like, oh shit! But they're yeah. way more advanced than us, yeah. and they just, they're just researching us. Yeah, they're like, don't don't contact the surface dwellers. The only thing, the only thing for me, the only thing I'll say this with for me is if the theory was that. You know, there's a, a a breakaway human civilization, c- human civilization that went <laughs> underground. I can't. I just have a really hard time believing that they would have superior, like craft propulsion crafts. You Why they I mean? have the they have the hollow earth sun? They have all the energy they need. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what? <laughs> all right, Maybe they might. They don't have fossil fuels. They had to go a different direction. Yeah, hollow Earth sun. I think it would have more fossil fuels. In the in the center of the hollow Earth, there's a sun, and that's where Agartha and all those oh, other. Oh, buddy, we're just scratching kingdoms. the we're just scratching the surface on sun conspiracies. There's two suns in our sky right now. You don't even know. Jupiter is about to turn into a third sun. I, I yeah, believe, we're going to three. That, that was, that's the plot of 2001 what? Space Odyssey. <laughs> no, it was, that was Mr. Conspiracies, Space News one yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, but that uh, that happens in. Jupiter yeah, becomes a sun. Two, yeah, well, yeah, it becomes like a second, like a star. Like they no, there's already two suns. People take uh, when you take photos through those like obsidian lenses, and there's two fucking really close dots, almost like a double. Yeah. So what's our but Parker Solar Probe doing? Just like going towards the one sun? <laughs> well, he picked a better sun. Yeah, they're they're tightly orbiting. Right. <laughs> super tight that we can't tell because it's too bright but there's two of them <laughs> they're just so close one's right behind the other but like just yeah. off by like a few meters um it, it's it's interesting to me that you have these like military documents that, i mean we it's not like we've known about this forever like these came out not recently but like or like late 90s early 2000s when yeah. all this came to light yeah um so it's like it, it's just it's cool to see that we we had military operations that were, you know, just like the gimbal and the go fast video. We've been having these kind of encounters for fucking ever. And th- they've just been burying them under like classified documents and stuff. And like, you know, people have been doing the work. Yeah, or too. it's like, or it's like they, they fall just by the wayside because like, like, like I said, like this, the, the print of that picture of Litwin's like photos of that object, there's only one survived uh, apparently. And it's just like, just fallen into some black hole of, you know, paperwork because like nobody gave a shit. Like, <laughs> it's like, well, there was no system in place. Like there, like there is now where it's like, you have like arrow, um, yeah. uh, or uh, kind of going in there and being like, okay, now we, we're figuring out a system in order to, col- you know, collate, collect and collate all of this data and these reports that are going, and we're going to keep them somewhere, you know, wh- where they will be, uh, you know, they will be reviewed. They will have, we'll have a team and they'll be doc- like that review will be documented. This is how we're going to do it. Um, if anybody hasn't watched the, the, the latest kind of uh, update that he gave to the, the Senate, uh, like the Senate Oversight Intelligence Committee, uh, you should go. Like it, it sounds, it all sounds pretty good because you're like, oh, this is way better than having two random Air Force officials that you had like probably just picked up. Like, oh, it's their duty today, and you're like, hey, you need to go talk to this guy who said he saw something. Like, man, like really, what? and then they drive out there. Like, yeah. 
like just get a story and then and then come back like it's not a big deal and whatever and you know so it, it's better than just having that and then it's like it just falls into again like these are these are pay but and this is also like we didn't have digital records back then so it's like some stuff is like you know it ends up if you have one copy of that file like eh, it goes missing or something you know mm-hmm. I, human error which is a thing <laughs> like uh you know well, and, and to be honest i'm like part of me can't part of me wonders like yes i'm every we're supposed to keep records but like how many records are just sort of like we're not releasing that don't yeah. get rid of it burn after or they just just like in a box it's it. in a box somewhere in the like in a box like you know located in some random ass closet where it's like oh we're remodeling you know we're remodeling this office so we got to clear out all this stuff and like you no know, everybody's looking at these pictures like i don't know what they are they've just been back there forever and it's in one of those crates about- wherever all those all indiana jones is fucking art <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah they're in there with the ark of the covenant and the, yeah. the crystal skull yeah, yeah. <laughs> top being reviewed by top men (laughs) it's 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 a it's a really interesting there's there's tons of readings on it and uh that you can hashtag look it up um it's a it's a fascinating look at that we've been having these experiences in our militaries over like not because it's always u.s if i a lot of times looking at this kind of stuff you always feel like the u.s military it's just it's them and the aliens. They're the only ones talking. This is a good one where it's like you can see that we had these the same whole military things. alliance. Yeah, these every whole, these royal things. air force and navy in the world was involved in this. Yes, so it's 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 fascinating to me that it's like you know we can if you look at this in 1952 and then extrapolate to now what we what has been released by just the United States government, that there's got to be videos and accounts and stuff from other governments that just haven't been released and haven't been uncovered yet and are just waiting. We're going to, we're going to, I'm sure there's going to be tons of stuff coming up um, in the future. Yep. So yeah, if it's, if we can find more of these reports that are just like, yeah, like we said, like this is declassified relatively recently, like, you know, at, like 20 years ago or something, but, um, still like these reports, there's still chances that this stuff again is, is locked in some, it's some random office building from the sixties that is just like, oh, it's just in here with all these, this other stuff. And somebody eventually goes through it. No, maybe Dan, maybe sense. that's what Trump had. <laughs> yeah. That was a secret so document. The, had. So it's in somebody's bathroom so, on the golf course. Like, yeah. No, it's in the fucking. It's in, in. It's in one of the Trump towers, like in the basement. He has it, like top secret. Fucking. Yeah, he took all the UFO display. files. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen it though? Like he literally has in one of the his hotels or some shit. He's got a, a folder bunker. that says like White House top secret, and it's sitting in like a display case. It's hilarious. How that? How that picture get up? Because it's What's in it? one of his businesses. Like he has it on display. Oh, on display, just a yeah. It's probably a joke. Uh, maybe, but that's, that's a joke, Jay. But that's that's what he took, and that's what the, that's what the, all this is about. He took all the secret documents. Well, I mean, I've seen interviews with him where he's like, they've asked him shit about aliens. He's like, I'm not an alien guy. Yeah, I'm, more like a, I'm more of yeah, a whatever can like help him. Russia kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but um, yeah. This is again. This is one of those. Uh, yeah, an international, an international incident where you had both not only just USA, but you had US and uh, British forces like seeing something up there at the same time within a short period of time uh, that you could is is relatively. I mean, you had these reports and like these these things have kind of uh, like the, the documents from this have been declassified you know luckily that we've gotten to to see some of these things and we don't have all the official documentation but it's like again what are we missing um there there could be tons of files that just got swept under the rug or again got lumped in with some other stuff and just never made it out like we have the project blue book has like tons of files that never it's things that never got investigated uh because you know somebody looked at it and was like you know, whoever they had look at it, I was like, ah, there's nothing here. Like, uh, no big deal, whatever. Um, you know, but just didn't, didn't record any of the, like the, the pertinent data I didn't put it down anywhere. They just kind of immediately just wrote it off as like, oh, this is nothing like no big deal. Um, you know, and then toss it off to the side and then it's like, oh no, there could have been something in there that was like, oh no, they're like, we, other people have seen this too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Let us but, know your thoughts. What do you think? What do you think that, operation mainstay 
ran into brace main brace <laughs> Jeez. Main brace ran into what? What did they see? What was what was pacing their planes? What UFOs. was leaving radar at a thousand it's miles per hour? At at least sure. mile thousand, uh, thousand miles per hour. Um, let us know your thoughts, and uh, you know you know where to hit us up: socials, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Facebook group, aliantheorists.com. What else we got, Zell? We got a theory of the week. We do. I do have Tossing. a theory. Right? Picture is in the group. Okay, hold on. I'll pull it up. Pull it up. Legend. That's the biggest <laughs> legend ever. I could not be more impressed by another human being mm. in my entire life. This guy. This guy's a badass. Full suit of armor. Grimnar. I don't Grim- know what his name is. He's yeah. on our Discord as Grimnar. It's Grimnar, yeah. yeah. Guy just casually is like, hey, anybody uh, in the area, do and do wherever the hell he is. I was like, I got to fight. And I'm like, you know, I, nobody really commented. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa like, what, what do you mean what fight? Like, kind of like, fight. You're talking like boxing, MMA? Like, what are you talking about? Like, you're talking my language here. Like, what's going on? And he's like, no, like, he said something about like a real fight. Yeah, I, I got to look at it. It's like real steel or something. I'm like, what? Like, oh, what I've heard of those. I've heard of that. And he's like, he's like, like, I like dress up in armor. Mm-hmm. Full suit of armor. Yep. Going a full scrap. And I'm like, full in my functional head, I'm like, suit of armor. Like, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I've seen this before. I'm like, it's pretty badass, but probably not exactly what this guy's talking about. Then he proceeds. And I was like, you got footage, man? Like, I'd love to see it. And he proceeds to post videos of him dressed in a suit of armor. Absolutely Wrecking fucking people. beating the shit out of some other dude in a suit of armor. Like, <laughs> Beating the piss out of him. It was Night the coolest battle. thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Like this is this is what you want to see at medieval, medieval times. Like honestly, we came I, for blood. When this I was, was watching blood, that, like, I was, was like, I feel like that's a sport that I would be really good at. Ah, <laughs> oh, you gas so fast though. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't. You, uh, you have to put on seventy. What's the suit like, armor? Like seventy pounds. But he's yeah. yeah. so you bad your I'm suit like a, would fucking rust. I'm like a. I'm like a. I'm like a Mack truck, right? Low low gear all day. Right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Dude, but anyways, Grimnar, you're an absolute badass. Yeah, and he dope. did it where he had the pickle baby shirt on underneath. Yeah, too. underneath. Yeah. That's so what that's, gave that's, his power. Yeah, that's plus three to strength for sure. Yeah, it's yeah, super pickle yeah. baby power. Yeah, there's three yeah. pickle babies in that jar. He so he had plus nine to all stats. Yeah, <laughs> so. but the guy's a badass. I could not be more impressed. That was wicked. Uh dude, it's, like he and, battered dude, he battered that dude. Yeah, was, it, maybe we'll I'll I'll ask him if we can post that on our socials. He out, yeah, yeah. he out, awesome. he out, gassed him, and then when the guy got tired, he just beat the shit out. Yeah, it was yeah. amazing. Rope a dope. Yeah, literally um, rope dope. Zell, I didn't know that. I didn't know that was a touring thing. That's fucking awesome. Zell, do That's we so have cool. uh, do we have some sort of contest? Uh, well, it's been a few years since our our logo, or more, more specifically, our artwork of the podcast was updated. Yeah, it's fun to put out. To refresh every once in a while. So we decided that we're going to have a little competition. But the competition will be well rewarded for the first, second, and third place. So pretty much what you got to do is take our logo, make new artwork for the podcast. Yeah, keep, yeah, you, keep, keep the logo. Keep the logo. Yeah, keep it. It's right. classic. We don't keep want the, it. Like that's... Keep like the abducting A we have. But then put your own spin on it. We want it in as high definition as you can. Uh, it'll be our new podcast logo. We'll use it for socials. Uh, we're going to have a first, second, and third place. So first place is going to be cash prize. 300 bucks for the winner. You get $300 cash. We pay you for your art. Second pesos. place. Pesos. <laughs> Just... Yeah, 300 pesos. pesos. <laughs> <laughs> Can you, well, at least Canadian dollars here. Yeah. All right? You get Canadian dollars. Everybody's doing the math. Well, we'll go, we'll go the currency <laughs> of your... Let's do the currency where you reside. Unless, Unless you, you reside dollars. in somewhere with a way, like, you know, he's been crazy. 300-somethings? What if they're yeah, euros? 300, now 300 we're broke. Somethings. Yeah. <laughs> you get three, cash right now. No, you get, three, you, get, you get Canadian dollars, all right? That's what you get. Yeah. But So 300 for first, 150 for second, 100 for third. Uh, but you're also going to get a little swag bag. We'll send you some merch. Uh, we're going to gift you a full subscription for one year to Supercast, which is just Patreon without the app. And you can still use it on any podcast player. 
Uh, so you and know, then you'll have for the winner, to all the all the fucking bonus shit. For first place, you're also going to come on a power hour and unveil the logo live with your boys. Yeah. And so we want we wanted to pay the artists for their work. So uh, yeah, top one, and top you three. Deemed you will be deemed logo king. Logo yeah. king. Logo master, king. Logo master. And, uh, you're the logo master. And there will no longer be a meme master. It's just the fucking yeah, logo master. Logo master. <laughs> and depending on how good the first place is, maybe theory right of the year. Who knows? <laughs> oh, we'll yeah. So we'll keep it going. We'll keep the comp- we'll competition going for four case files from now. So it would be two eighty eight. After two eighty eight, we'll announce it on the power. Uh, why don't we go? Why don't we go? Like, should we stretch it? Because we didn't. We Let's only have three hundred. I was. That's what I was going to say. I'll unveiling no, three hundred is like months and months away. That's okay. fine. No, gives you that's crazy. Months and months to like cultivate two, a beautiful two, image. Two ninety. Listen, we I keep like the number. Actually, it. I like two eighty eight. I like eighty eight. That's good. Two eighty eight. Eighty eight. Yeah. We should unveil it on three hundred. Okay. Well, contest. Contest. We'll we'll see. We'll we'll hash Jesus, that. Okay. Out that. <laughs> we'll hash that out. I guess. Yeah. Two eighty eight. Yeah. You got some time. You want to wait till Christmas to unveil? We will, but yeah. we'll figure it out. Twenty thirty. <laughs> <laughs> we like our nice round number. That's good. <laughs> All right, well, um, send your designs to alientheorists at gmail.com with logo submission or something like along those lines on, in the title, and uh, we'll put you in the contest. Yeah. Winner. Trans- transparent the background, crown. please. Trans- <laughs> of course. Transparent background. <laughs> high definition as you can. And we'll pay you for your art. We yep. appreciate it. Uh, and as we always say at the end of these things, keep those eyes what? the skies. Whoa. Fuck! Whoa. This Wait, week's newest Patreon supporters. Oh, shit. Oh. I forgot about that. Jeez, he got too excited. Come bring him, bring those eyes back down. <laughs> get, get those eyes down. Look at your feet. This week's newest supporters, we have Cebus, Wyatt Halliday, Carol M. Velasquez, and Dan, can you read that? What does that say? Was it, uh, Your pledge by CR34M. What's, what's that in normal CR words? 3.1459. Like, like what, it, what does that translate digits? to? I'm Steve. 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 You're, you're yeah. pledged by Steve. Steve. Oh, is that the cream pie one? <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Yep. <laughs> that's what it makes sense. I, get I saw it. that. I was like, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get it. Uh, Not at all. <laughs> cream pie. There you go. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, one. Yeah, we. They, yeah, they went five digits in the pie too. There you go. Uh, and as we always say, now at the end of these things, keep those eyes on the skies. Are we, are we, are we, are we I forgot. Yeah. While we were talking the whole time, did you want to laugh at my pain? <laughs>